Welcome to Chem 361B, which is the second part of a two-semester physical chemistry course offered at the California State University Fullerton. I am the creator of this lecture series, Dr. Michael Groves, and over the next 19 lecture videos, we will explore quantum mechanics and how it relates to chemical systems. Quantum mechanics is a theory that best predicts the properties of particles at the atomic and subatomic scale. It is arguably one of the most successful theories in the history of science, and it has allowed humanity to predict and create, among other things, lasers, light-emitting diodes, transistors, and semiconductors, leading to several important technologies such as the microprocessor and non-invasive medical imaging techniques. In the center of the slide, there is an image on a logarithmic scale that shows what things we would expect to see at various length scales. Quantum mechanics best describes things on the left side of the scale, things that are nanometers in length or less. For example, we will frequently use the length scale, the angstrom, which is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 10 meters in this course. According to quantum mechanics, the state of the system is quantified using metrics such as its energy and momentum. However, these quantities may be restricted to discrete values. This is called quantization. Furthermore, according to this theory, objects have characteristics of both particles and waves, meaning that there is a wave-particle duality, and there are limits to the precision with which quantities can be known, and these are predicted by the uncertainty principle. Finally, the evolution of the properties of quantum mechanical systems operate probabilistically. We will cover all of these non-intuitive topics as we progress through the course. We as humans, on the other hand, live on the right side of this bar. Hair, mites, and ants are all things that we can see and interact with directly. We have learned that we can predict the state of these objects at any time with near certainty, barring any major unknown exterior influence, based on recording a few parameters at some given time. This worldview, the one that we find intuitive, is called a deterministic worldview. The deterministic worldview of the physical evolution of a system is what is encapsulated by classical mechanics. It can be summarized by saying that a deterministic system is one where there is no randomness involved in its evolution. Newton could be described as the father of classical mechanics, and we've probably been exposed to concepts like kinematics, where we were given the initial conditions of a projectile and were told to find its location or state at some time in the future. Using Newton's laws, we can predict this with certainty. Quantum mechanics, on the other hand, uses probability to describe the evolution of a system. A probabilistic system can be defined as one where the future state cannot be predicted perfectly. There are finite possibilities that certain outcomes may occur. Max Planck, who is arguably the father of quantum mechanics, was the first to apply quantum mechanical principles to solve the famous black body catastrophe problem at the end of the 19th century. We will examine this in a future lecture. A famous thought experiment which illustrates how a system can be probabilistic as well as expose some of the truly non-intuitive tenets of quantum mechanics is the Schrodinger's cat experiment. Consider a cat put into a sealed box where there's a radioactive molecule. If the radioactive molecule decays, it will trigger a sensor which will then expose the cat to a poison and kill it. The question posed to the observer is, is the cat alive or dead? Because the decay of the radioactive molecule is probabilistic, then one cannot make a prediction with certainty if the cat is alive or dead unless directly observed by opening the box. In fact, according to the most common interpretation of quantum mechanics, being the Copenhagen interpretation, the cat in this box is both alive and dead, and when the box is opened to directly observe whether the cat still lives, that is the moment that the system chooses which state the cat is in. Now, the Schrodinger's cat experiment was designed to demonstrate the absurdity of applying quantum mechanics to everyday objects. Even though many classical mechanical principles can be derived from quantum mechanics, paradoxes like the cat being both alive and dead until it is observed troubled many of the founders of the theory. By outlining all of these quantum mechanical principles and examples, we've hopefully demonstrated that quantum mechanics is not intuitive. Don't try to rationalize quantum mechanics from your deterministic point of view. Instead, focus on learning how to use the theory to make predictions about atomic systems. Arguably, two of the smartest people of the 20th century had trouble rationalizing quantum mechanics. Einstein did not like the probabilistic nature of the theory and famously said that God does not play dice with the universe. While Richard Feynman is quoted as saying that if you think you understand quantum theory, 
you don't understand quantum theory. With this in mind, this course has three learning objectives. The first is to develop an understanding of the nature of quantum systems and apply these principles to solve the Schrodinger equation and determine physical observables. This learning objective focuses on building our quantum mechanical toolbox. Because this course is directed towards upper division chemistry students, the application of this toolbox will be to make predictions of chemical systems. This is what inspires the other two learning objectives. So by the end of the course, we will understand what it means for a system to be quantized and relate the quantized nature of energy from the Schrodinger equation to predict spectroscopic phenomena, including electronic, vibrational, NMR, and rotational spectroscopy. Furthermore, we will use solutions to the Schrodinger equation to, to describe how chemical bonds are formed between atoms. By the end of the course, you will have been exposed to a theory which can be used to predict the outcome of many physical processes that you have covered in previous chemistry courses. Learning how to apply the theory of quantum mechanics will enhance two principal concerns of chemists, how atoms bond to each other, and how does one probe the nature of molecules through spectroscopy. I have several points regarding how the course will be organized that I want to share which will help orient you as to my expectations for the course. One. This class will employ a flipped model and use active learning during class. Prior to every class, it is expected that you watch the provided preparation material and complete the preparation assignment. You will have an unlimited number of attempts to successfully complete the assignment. The purpose of these assignments is for you to practice some of the knowledge presented in the preparation lecture in a context where it's all right to make mistakes. Then, during class, you will work in groups to complete activities together. The collaborative environment will help you crystallize key course concepts. Keep in mind that you will get out of this process what you put in, so full participation will lead to higher achievement. 2. On every evaluation, quiz, midterm, final, etc., demonstrate your knowledge. I give part marks based on how you work to solve problems, so small mistakes at the beginning of a long solution will be given almost full credit if the rest is performed correctly. This means always attempt each problem as fully as you can so that I can justifiably reward what you know. 3. During the semester you are allowed to have a bad day. In recognition of this, I will drop some combination of your worst quizzes and midterms. See the syllabus for more details. 4. If you have any questions or think I evaluated you unfairly, please ask. All solutions will be posted, so check all your work. If there are any issues, please contact me so that we can fix them. 5. All grades will be posted to the titanium. Given that I'm dropping some of your poorest evaluations, I will not be scaling any grades. What you see on titanium at the end of the semester will be your final grade. 6. This is not a calculus course, so we will not do math for math's sake. The math is used to describe the science, and it's the relationship between the two which will be emphasized. Additionally, You've all completed single variable, differential, and integral calculus, and will be expected to draw from that toolbox to solve problems. In addition to this, I do encourage you to sign up for a free account at Wolfram Alpha. Details on how are posted to the course webpage. There will be problems in both the preparation exercises and activities that will require math techniques outside the scope of this course that can easily be solved there. It can also provide a training tool for simpler problems. Keep in mind that on all in-class evaluations, you will be required to solve everything by hand with only a scientific calculator, and problems will of course be created with this in mind. 7. The discussion board on Titanium will serve as the main location to discuss course content related questions. If you email me these types of questions, I will simply direct you to post them there so I can answer them. This is so that everyone can benefit from our individual conversations. This outlines my teaching philosophy for the course. Please read the syllabus for more specifics regarding evaluations, schedule, and expectations. To summarize, quantum mechanics is a probabilistic theory that is most successfully applied to atomic systems. We will use it to make predictions regarding spectroscopy and the nature of bonding between atoms. And finally, do not try to rationalize the theory. Instead, focus more on learning how to use the theory to make predictions about atomic systems.